We haven't been vlogging too much recently as we've had quite a lot going on. We're going to cover that in this vlog. We will go back to England next year, back to the UK. So our garden redesign is underway. We've got a lot to do, but we've made a good start. We had a delivery yesterday of some mahogany wood. So here she is with a list check. As we're going to do a little bit of construction at the house, something that we decided to... James wanted this for a long time, but it's a bit of a last minute, isn't it? Mm. <laughs> and it's not for you, cream. Sorry. So we've got some mahogany wood. This is probably the strongest wood you can buy here in the Philippines. Bamboo, probably not up to the job. Coconut lumber, certainly not. But the mahogany is solid. Behind me, we have some canopies being made. We have one at the back, and we're gonna have one, maybe even two at the front. We have purposes for these. As we've lived in our house now for over 12 months and being here for that length of time you can really appreciate where there might be a little fault or little problem or something that needs to be addressed the canopy we have outside the kitchen works extremely well however when it rains very very hard rain can still get in from the side so what we're doing is we're going to extend the canopy make it longer we're going to have a seated area underneath a bit more entertaining space outside and it will help a little bit with the rain problem as when it rains in the Philippines, it really rains. It rains very heavy. But as I said, we've been here for over 12 months now. We've had a whole year's worth of energy bills, electricity bills, and we've managed to go through them and work out where we're spending money and where we can save money. Now, energy costs are rising all throughout the world. In the UK, for example, they're gonna go up, or they have gone up even more in October, and they're due to go up even more next year. In the Philippines, the same thing is happening. Maybe not by such a big amount, but month on month, the energy costs where we are in Leyte have been increasing. And there's lots of things you can do to save money, to save electricity. In our back garden, for example, we use nothing but solar lights. We have many lights dotted around and they provide us fantastic lighting at night. Even when it's gray and it's raining, they still manage to charge up a bit, still give us some use. They're very inexpensive. You can buy them from Shopee, Lazada. You can buy them from City Hardware, Wilcon. Lots of places to buy them. And they're good quality. Really reasonable price, really good quality. If you're gonna be building a house in the Philippines, one of the things taken into account is the energy costs. I'm not sure what the average energy cost is here. It's gone up a little bit since we moved in. We have a few more devices plugged in now and then, but generally, it's very affordable. We spent, also spent quite a bit of time inside the house. Isabella's now face-to-face -face in school, but she was at home three days a week for eight to 10 hours a day on the computer with the ceiling fan on. We tend to use the ceiling fans at night when we sleep. Our fridge is plugged in and in use 24 hours a day. Same with our water dispenser, our router likewise. Everything else we unplug if we don't need to use it. But when you build a house in the Philippines, there's many things you can do. So one of the ways we save money each month on our electricity bill is by using floor fans. But not just any old floor fans. These have solar panels. These are solar charging floor fans. So we have two, we have one downstairs and one upstairs. These can be moved all around the house. You plug them into the solar panel to charge them. Now at the moment, the solar panels are inside the house but eventually we will put them outside on the wall where they get a lot of sun to fully charge every single day. Even being inside though, they do get a lot of sun. They do charge very well. They very, very rarely run out of energy. They're built in power banks, which can store the energy when it's not in use. They have remote controls. They have four speeds. You can control the swing as well from it, but also it's got a light built in, a mosquito light, and it can charge devices from USB, such as your phone. These really do save us a lot on our electricity bill. 
as we tend to use these when we're in the rooms. Quite often we'll open our windows and put the fans on to have a good air circulation in the room. We don't have any air conditioning at all throughout the house and we don't need it. What we have is perfectly suitable. Now air conditioning will use a lot of electricity every month. Now if you're looking to build a house, take into account its location and try to maximize the airflow, the natural airflow. Where we are on an elevated lot, we have a great flow of air from the sea. A cool breeze comes over, especially in the evenings. It's never hot at night here. Have enough windows in the right positions. You can keep the windows open in the daytime to cool the house down. And we painted our house white, which helps to deflect the heat rather than encourage it. It helps take the heat away from the house. We tend to keep doors open where possible to encourage airflow. And these ways we can keep cool in the day and at the night without use of air conditioning, which saves us so much money on electricity. Jean's giving it a bit of a tidy. Kubu's uh, almost ready to be used again. It's been used like a shed really for a little while. We've had quite a lot of building material in here as we have a lot of projects carrying on at the house at the moment. The work we're doing should be finished this week. Hopefully we can get the whole house done by the end of October even. That would be the dream. We hope we can. We're working hard. We haven't been vlogging too much recently as we've had quite a lot going on. We're gonna cover that in this vlog. Been a difficult week. I know. We haven't been vlogging too much this week. We've got a lot of work going on at the house, but something much more important than that has happened. It's it's really hit us all really hard. We lost a member of our family this week. Especially we are far from England. It's hard because we can't just, you know, travel that quick. Can't be with people at the moment. Be right away feel a bit detached from it don't you a bit helpless mm. you can't be where you want to be you want to go and talk to people you want to comfort people get a bit more information make sure everything's all okay see if you can help Isabella is very very sad because of her grandma yeah it was we lost grandma and we were very close to her it was very difficult to leave the UK but her grandma was one of those people that always brightened up our day we hope we did the same for her when we were with her. But every time we were with her, it was exciting, it was fun. And she's gone, unfortunately. It's, mm -hmm. it's so sad. Jane was just discussing she's, with her for next year, we plan to go back to the UK. Yeah, she's very close to me as well. And it's sad for me and Isabella. Because next year, we'll not be able to see her. No. We had a, um, you know, good good plan to see her next year His, she's gone it's very difficult very difficult mm. but life carries on we have to pick ourselves up and keep going and that's one of the hardest things isn't it yeah. being so far away so it is very very difficult when you lose somebody especially when you're the other side of the world now, a few months ago, I lost one of my uncles. He was a, a great character, very friendly, very funny, very generous. And it's very difficult to be so far away from them. But when you move to another country, this is part of it. It's one of the things you sign up for. My uncle's funeral was held in Bristol and they had a live Zoom feed of it. So I stayed up late here. I was able to watch real time as it all went down. I heard so many wonderful things said about him. I could even see my mum sat there. I just wish I could be next to her at that moment. Tell her it's all okay. But it's difficult when you're away. Jane was away for so long and it makes you miss family so much more when this happens. 
we will go back to England next year, back to the UK. It's not going to be permanent, it's just going to be a vacation, catch up with people. Hopefully my family still can come early next year. But whatever happens, we're going to plan a trip back to the UK next year. <laughs> okay, let's go. Ah, so we will have a house reveal, show you exactly what we've been doing very soon, but we want to finish it all. And as you might see, the well, bean, the lima bean, the fava bean, whatever it was, I think the lima bean, the butter bean is gone. And Jane's going to come over here because this is our ube. And it's quite big, isn't it? It goes right over the wall and it goes right to the floor outside. And let me tell you, the wall on the other side, it's not the same height, it's almost double. It's a very, very, very big drop. We were under the impression it only grows in the ground as a root and it takes about a year until it's ready to harvest. I don't know, it's really up to me. This is, this has been what, uh, nine months? Ten months? It's been about nine or ten months. Oh, there's a big one. <laughs> there's a big one? Ah. Oh wow, look at that. Oh my god, it's so, it's so <laughs> I thought there was only a small one there. Oh, Perhaps can you get these leaves out? Mm, oh, there we sure. are. Oh, no. it's oh. oh, there's some more. There's lots. I'm not sure so if it's this actually, is ready, because they're not, this one is It is ready. So we were wrong about the ube. It's actually... It's purple yam. Oh wow, purple yam, ube. I get the big one. So ube actually grows on the vine and in the ground. And the ones on the vine are ready after about three months. The one in the ground about six months. So these are probably actually gone a bit too long. We may have lost some. So like these, these are all on the vine. But the one underground can be anything up to six kilogram. Imagine that, we've got a six, potentially a six kilogram ube under there. Yeah, I think so. It's Close. possible. But some are small. Yeah. You need Maybe need more time. So I, I don't think, do think they more. do because it said, from what we research, they do take time, but sometimes they just don't get big no matter what. Really? Yeah, they can range in size. I could be wrong about that, but from what I what I researched, it does seem that this is ready. Looking at the colour of the leaves, they're starting to go yellow. They're starting Wait. to die off. I'm scared to like cut it off. No, just. Open it because they might have something to jump. <laughs> something jumping out and you like a uh, Homer Junior. I know. Or Homer Junior Junior Junior. Oh, do you want me to? Do you want to cut off some of the leaves? No. No. Not yet. There might be some hanging over the wall even. Oh yeah, maybe I can try to have a look. <laughs> can you see? <laughs> don't, go, don't go too hard. <laughs> Hold on, I will just quickly look. All right. Be careful. Quite long. It goes right to the floor. Yeah. It's huge. This ube is huge. Purple yam, ube. When you leave the Philippines and you've been here a little while or on holiday, you miss certain tastes, and one of those is ube. I'm going to make ube ice cream. Absolutely. Oh, ube. Love ube. Fresh ube. Ube donuts are nice. Dunkin'. <laughs> ube Dunkin' donuts, my favourite. Guilty <laughs> treat. The one with the peanuts on top, the nuts. Nutty ube. Oh, what's your favourite donut? I don't. You like Bavarian? I like Bavarian, but. What's <laughs> your favourite? <laughs> That's all, like one, one um, donut. Everyone likes also. a donut now and then. I don't really like the nuts. No. Nah. Right. They're nice, but I'm not, I don't have a sweet tooth. Not a sweet tooth, no. Yeah. So this is our harvest from the vine so far. It's, it's from the vine. Awesome. Really awesome. It's. Uh, you can see the colour of it, look at that. Just help me, we might the have purple. a purple. Can you keep an eye on? Okay, I'll keep an eye if anything's moving. Just keep an eye. Okay, I'll keep watching. Snake. Yeah, well we can compost it after the leaves and stuff. Oh! oh no, it's just one of these branches. Oh. <laughs> so that was this on the like vine it's fallen, that started to grow again. Yes. Wow. You can see the root. Oh yeah, Coming out. so that's perfect to keep to grow again. 
Jane also planted ginger. Now this is just ginger you bought, was it? You put it in the ground afterwards? Yeah. You let it, um, you let it, what's the word? I cut it. You cut it so it would grow a, a shoot? Oh yeah? That one. Oh wow. Yeah. Well, a ginger. How, look how many are they. That's from one piece? Yes. Wow. I'm gonna get some more here. So each of those stems would have a, like a root, I suppose. Mm. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching. So we've had a lot of things going on this last week or so. And uh, we're getting there. The house is almost finished. Thank you very much for watching. If you haven't subscribed and you do like our content, please subscribe, hit the bell icon be notified next time we upload a video thank you always for your comments for your support and we'll see you soon mm -hmm.